right? So should we start then? Uh, and, uh, let's start the, the three session, and we have the pleasure to welcome our first talk. Uh, uh, but then let's get me. It's for uh, interest in uh, cybersecurity for methods, and it's for uh, smart cards, uh, security in the past, and it's going to be what. Uh, and its integration in, uh, in right. Thank you. So, so I'm with Damien Mara. We'll uh, give some demonstration of what we are speaking about. We will speak about the safe post issuance software provisioning. So, what I have in mind, in summary, first I will introduce uh, software provisioning on, and then we will uh, speak about uh, uh, a very first module for us, the uh, very first contribution in Riot OS uh, uh, that we have called uh, XIPFS, uh, which is an executive place file system. Then uh, we'll speak about security, and then main concern here, um, we will give a short presentation about the PIP MPU and the way we use it to, to enforce uh, isolation uh, inside Riot. So first, I'm speaking about post issuance. What I have in mind about that, the fact that when you build uh, an embedded device, first, uh, some system is burned somewhere far away from here, and um, software can be put inside the ROM at this stage. Just after the wafer is cured, I give to a manufacturer, the manufacturer embed the silicium in some device and it can insert some software in flash typically as you do when you uh, deploy some software with your uh, board and then the device is sell to a retailer or somewhere in the wild world and uh, the retailer package uh, and the device with some other stuff and uh, finally, uh, the device uh, comes to the end of the end consumer. Um, we're speaking about offline deployment when we're on the left, and we're speaking about online deployment when we're on the right, because here it's uh, in a lab, everything is under control, but on the right, we're in the wide world, and we lose almost uh, all uh, security about uh, the place where we, where we deploy the software. <laughs> so uh, what does it mean to, to allow a Riot to deal with uh, software uh, provisioning uh, post issuance? Why doing that first? Uh, who want post issuance? The customer typically enjoy to have some app store or some stuff like that where well, you can uh, load some new app in your device uh, in order to add some extra value or to select some software, some add-on. Uh, but this is a kind of customization on the use. Uh, but the retailer also enjoy to add some uh, software in the device. Uh, typically, uh, when uh, in order to provide some software personalization, to say it's the, it's a device of the retailer, get something more when you buy your device here, and also because the retailer uh, makes some deal with third party and add some extra software from uh, third party. Uh, and finally, the manufacturer sometimes. Uh, would enjoy to have the ability to uh, deploy a software after issuance, uh, simply because they have to run uh, something. Oh, uh, one years later, we have sell uh, ten thousand uh, device, and now we think we have to collect some to gather some data to in order to prepare the next generation of our device. But we don't have uh, the way to gather data, but we can some uh, piece of code over the air, gather data, um, and use it in order to, uh, to prepare the next generation of core device. 
So, uh, how to support uh, post issuance over Riot? How to allow to deploy uh, third party software on the fly over the year uh, over Riot? Mm -hmm. That's here that we propose a module, XIPFS, which is supposed to uh, allow this, to, to provide a way to deploy this kind of software. So, okay. First demonstration. Uh, yes. So, uh, to enable our um, executing test file system, we first uh, move on the default example of Riot. We edit the Mac file. Then we uncomment the line of our module. And then we build Riot. So, this is done offline. Yes. So, so now that we have um, Bill Riot, we flash it on the board. Or using a tiny device. And then uh, we connect to the Riot shell uh, using PyTerm. So uh, if I type help, we can see that uh, there is a new command uh, brought by uh, our modules. Uh, so this is classical uh, command to uh, deal with uh, uh, files such as uh, cp, uh, cat, uh, remove. So now that uh, we have uh, this command, uh, we can uh, load files. So let's move on to the first example. So the first example is a, a simple hello world.txt file. So if I get this file, it contains a, a hello world string. So in order to load this file, I will connect to the board. And then I will, uh, I will use the put command. So the put command will uh, transfer the file from the host to the board. So if I type uh, put hello world, txt so okay the file is loaded so i can uh, get uh, the file on the board okay uh, we have we have uh, the the hello world stream i can reboot the board so if i type this again the data is uh, well persistent so now that we are able to add file we can load the binaries so uh, let's move on to the next demonstration so uh, this uh, program is a, a very uh, simple program. So first we uh, retrieve the temperature from a, a sensor. We display the hello world string uh, on the serial link, and then we print the, we print the temperature. So uh, to build a whole program, uh, we type uh, make uh, main.elf. So, okay, we have a main.l file here. Uh, we uh, are not loading uh, this kind of uh, format because it is, uh, it is complicated and uh, we need only a few information of it. So we have created a binary format, uh, okay, which is uh, simpler than uh, the that help uh, file, so, uh, which is a .bin. So we type main.bin. So we, we have a main.bin. And if we compare the size of the two binary, we can see that the main.bin is smaller than the, the main.elf. So now that we have the whole binary, we can load it. So once again, uh, we connect to the terminal of uh, the shell terminal right. If I type ls, uh, there is uh, still uh, the hello world file. So now we put main.bin. So the file is being loaded. One kilobyte, it's bigger. So, okay, the, if I type ls, we can see that um, our binary is well loaded. So if I can x dump uh, the file, the binary. Okay, we, we, reach, we see here the previous string of uh, the main.c file. 
And now we can use the exec command to execute uh, the main.bin. If I type exec main.bin, <coughs> we see, uh, so we see uh, the hello world string and the temperature sensor. If I put my hand on the temperature sensor, we should see the temperature uh, stranger. Like the temperature <laughs> <is> the <laughs> 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 but the temperature is, is changing. <laughs> So, thank you, Damien. So, how, it, how does it work? Uh, basically, when you uh, include the, the executing place file system, the remaining flash in the device is used, is formatted as a file system, file storage, a very simple one. And, uh, and when you ask to the executing place file system module to exec something, by the way, it just called the binary, which is uh, in flash. It's not a conventional uh, loading process where the software is loaded from, from storage space to RAM. It remains in the storage place because both storage place is addressable. So we don't have to load anything. We can run the binary in place, in the flash. This suppose that the file system will not fragment the file, but we deal with that. Um, and so uh, when it's uh, done, uh, the code will be executed in flash, but global variable stack and stuff like that must be uh, get from RAM. So we deal with the compiler in order to split uh, uh, in order to uh, allow position independent code compilation, in order to uh, uh, have a global offset table and to relocate the data and runtime data in the remaining RAM beyond the RAM used by a Riot. Uh, but when we run a software, the whole remaining RAM is given to, to, the, to the running software. So we have to wait until the end before allowing to run something else because we have small amount of space in, in RAM. Okay, we will go, we will not go uh, deeper in detail on how it's work. I can speak with you later <laughs> if you're interested about that. But we will go with, I will speak about another issue, the security issue, which is main concern here. So, another demonstration. Uh, yes. So um, I uh, wrote a small program that uh, is able to dump uh, memory. So uh, this is uh, the third example. So uh, if I uh, if we look at the oh if we look at the code, uh, it is a simple uh, program that uh, just take uh, two arguments. The first one is the uh, address, the start address to dump, and uh, the second is uh, the size of the size of two to print. So if I build uh, if I build this program and if I load it on the board, we we'll see that uh, we can do uh, any part of the of the memory. Experiment some trouble with P term, but we're not alone. We see a lot of people was claiming some trouble with serial link. So okay, that's why it's take a while. It's supposed to be much faster, but we don't know why we lose the connection. Just just like you know, like what are the characteristics characteristics of the board you use? Oh, it's a uh, it's a uh, GST. Four kilobyte of right. RAM and uh, half megabyte of flash. And it's a big it's one. Uh, yes, no, it is. Uh, so uh, now that we have loaded uh, our dump uh, binary, uh, I can, for example, uh, exec uh, so dump the bin with uh, the address of uh, the start address of the dump dot bin file so uh, uh, 
uh, its size is uh, 1712. So I'm able to dump this memory. And I'm also able, for example, to dump the hello world, uh, the hello world string. So I write the start address of the, of the hello world uh, file with its size. And effectively, I, I'm able to, to print, uh, to print the, the string of the file. So everything is open here. There is no security. So we will want to improve this. Uh, in Nil, we are working on uh, something which is called a proto kernel, which is a piece of code uh, using NPU in order to provide a partitioning of the memory. So a partition is typically a, a chunk of address space uh, linked together to form a wall partition. And you can run some software inside a partition or uh, on switch from a partition to another where you have a syscall or something like that. Uh, and so um, the software is wrote in Galina C, a subset of Galina. Galina is language coming with a, a proof assistant, which is called Coq, well-known proof assistant. So all the stuff done around the MPU using Galina C is proved on is, is Cog and is proof to maintain isolation <coughs> partition. So what more precisely a partition? Oh, target is this one. We'll speak about footprint at the end. Uh, what's what is partition? Oh, so when when you start, all the memory space is available and or uh, software start. Pip is booting and pip coach all the memory space. Uh, wait, wait. Uh, uh, pip start a root partition, the very first partition, and give almost all the memory to the root partition. So the root partition, uh, the only uh, space not given to the root partition is the memory space used by pip itself. And it's mandatory in order to prove that pip is one who is dealing with the MPU. Nobody else can change data structure and code uh, proof. Um, this is part of the proof. Uh, but all other things are uh, available. So the root partition uh, can use its own memory to split again uh, some uh, chunk of memory. MPU speak about uh, ARM, MPU speak about uh, um, uh, Address space region, it's address region, space region. Uh, okay, so a chunk of address space. And um, build some extra partition. And um, the proof embedding PIP will uh, uh, claim that uh, uh, P1 will not be able to access to P2. But the root partition is able to get back all the memory uh, give to a sub partition. So there is vertical sharing or horizontal isolation. And it's recursive, so you can imagine a sub, sub partition and so on. Uh, so we use this scheme uh, in this way. What we have uh, achieved is simply to start PIP, PIP start Riot. Riot is working on PIP. It's new port of Riot uh, available. And uh, Riot. Uh, include or execute in place file system and the execute in place file system make partition, make partitioning with uh, the file loaded. So each file is in a, in a separate partition. So doing so, we can ensure that a file cannot access another file nor Riot itself. So, demonstration. <laughs> so, um... We write a safe command, a safe exec command, so which um, execute a, a dynamically loaded binary to a, a, an isolated environment. So, for example, I can execute uh, the same program as before. Um, so I will write the start address of the binary of the dump binary. 
public side. So I'm able to access this, uh, I access my code, but if I try to, uh, to dump the hello world uh, file, we get a foot and then we kill the, the child part. Thank you. So next. Uh, so conclusion, we we'll provide a way to deploy uh, over the air uh, post issuance piece of software independently of the core of Riot. Doing so, we have enforced uh, we have given the ability to third party to deploy some software over Riot. And in order to preserve security, we are able to run the third party application in a, uh, with isolation in order to avoid any uh, access to uh, illegal memory, uh, cryptographic key, or whatever is doing the, the, the core of the Riot operating system. Uh, so about the foot, memory footprint, probably one question about what is the target. The, the, XI, the XIP file system by itself is small. It's just one kilobyte of flash, um, very small, small amount of RAM. Uh, we don't, uh, we are just uh, reporting the global variable here. The stack is the same as the stack of the user of the executing release file system. Uh, so this is not providing any security. If you put this, you just have a way to deploy software post issuance, but dynamic binding uh, and all the stuff are, are done inside. Uh, but if you want uh, the isolation, you have to embed PIP MPU. PIP MPU is bigger. It, it needs a uh, uh, three kilobyte of RAM on the, 30 kilobyte of uh, flash in order to, to work. Uh, but it's proven. Okay, it's not uh, nice, but yes. So why Um, why? How, how does how does the safe execution get back into it get back into the mode where it was before, where all the memory is accessible again after the function is terminated? Is this run in a special mode in the processor, or is there some other trick run? Wait. <laughs> okay. We uh, so the question is about. Uh... <laughs> No, we, we just use MPU. What is MPU? MPU it's uh, no uh, available with uh, almost every uh, uh, ARM processor, uh, and uh, so it's kind of special mode because we can switch off or on the MPU, and so if it's switched off, the default state everything is available, and when we run uh, a file, we switch it off on. And so the user as a isolation is uh, take place. What's the question? How, yeah. how how is that switched off again in a way that the that the executable cannot switch it off? Uh, why the executable cannot switch it off? Okay, yeah. it's because the the whole thing actually both riot and the running file are user space, so they don't have access to hardware register. Okay, so the, the full, the full, Riot is also running user space? Yes. So, right. okay. Uh, okay. That's why we're speaking about porting Riot over. Okay, yeah, that, that was the same. Okay, thanks. Um, about that, we use parallel virtualization, so okay. implementation of Riot requests PIP to access hardware. <laughs> Great, great talk. Um, how do you access the, the functions like uh, data system calls then? Like I saw you have printf, you have the street sensor. How is that 
was it accessed from the application? Yes. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, David in the detail. Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's say um, how we deal with that. So there is two scenarios. If uh, the file is not uh, running in an isolated state, so when the riot called the binary, binary is not linked with riot. It, it, it has been compiled uh, separately, and so they don't know where riot functions are. So riot give a table, a pointer table, and say, OK, first uh, available services here, second available services here. And so uh, in the uh, in the application side, you you just use this uh, handler to call back uh, right. When you're running over pip in an isolated state, uh, you have to request pip to switch uh, to another partition. You you are running in a separate partition, and we use, we have a syscall called yield uh, used to switch off from the partition to the root partition. So, so this is actually a real uh, syscall-like uh, mechanism. Take more CPU cycle. Does the pip protection only apply to ROM, or does it also apply to RAM? Oh, okay. Protection is applied everywhere. That's why I was speaking about chunk of memory because a partition here, I just say a box and say, okay, everything is related. But uh, actually, the running file and flash, uh, yeah, I'm yeah, sure that you can dump this own uh, flash memory, but uh, also use RAM. And obviously, there is another chunk for the RAM available for the partition, but not for RAM used by Riot, for example. A partition is not just a chunk of memory, but a set of chunk of memory. <clears throat> what's, what's the content of the stdwrite.c file, and uh, how do you get the content? OK, so I, uh, we get the content because uh, when the XIPFS called the uh, binary give the pointer to the, to the table, and it's a table of function. Uh, how, how do, you, um, do you pass the, the linker results or the no, no. ZM? Okay. Uh, the linker is not aware about that. It's just a parameter of the, not main, but CRT0, you know, the piece of code which is executed before main. It's deep in detail, but when you when you implement a main function in C, it's not the real entry point of the binary. The real entry point is called CRT, C runtime, yeah. by Zach. And when uh, XIPFS calls the CRT of the binary compiled, it gives to the CRT uh, in a register. Uh, yeah. uh, um, we give uh, the table, the address of the table in the that's when we are not running in an isolated way. When it's, okay, that's when we're running uh, exec, not safe exec. Because, I mean, okay, it's quite confusing. Um, yeah. but, where's the table located? Is it in the right? Or is it in your uh, STD uh, right? Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Then you had the uh, SD right. Let's see. I, I assume there are the function pointers that point are pointing to your uh, OS layer. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if we are not running in uh, in this mode, if we are just running uh, uh, all together, Riot and the module, it's it's just uh, an address gives to the pointer. And what is in uh, Riot STD lib? Is just a wrapper. We say you call printf. We call the first entry of the table. Okay. Okay. And the first entry of the table is the printf give by right. Okay. 
But if we are working in this case, that's, that, that's totally different. The same uh, Riot STD lead work differently. It requests PIP to send a signal to Riot, like a conventional Cisco. Almost. Uh, is, is this dynamic linking mechanism like did you develop that yourself or did it already exist? No, no, we deal with uh, <laughs> we deal with uh, our hardware. It's 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 very you you say. Uh, I mean, I said that ELF is a huge format. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's quite complex, uh, and yeah. it's it's not easy to to deal with the okay. linking in ELF. So. We make a lot of things offline. That's why we convert ELF in bin file format. And bin file format provides just a minimal subset of what we need to make relocation and dynamic linking possible. And we remove all the symbol table for debugging and stuff like that. That's why we train the size. Yeah, yeah. But we generate also, perhaps you can show. Uh, yes, uh, a GDB init uh, file. Uh, so here. When, when we build the bin file, we, we remove all uh, debugging info, but we generate a GDB file in order to give to GDB uh, debugging info who are not available in our... Yeah, okay. okay, so two, two so, different files. Yes, two different files, one for GDB and one for the hardware. I have one last question. This is maybe a bit up, but it takes more. Step back. So, what kind of perspective do you think this opens for, say, by AMAC? Uh, assuming we're ready to pay the price of, say, 30k of, of flash and 30k of RAM, um, how would you use this in some distribution of fibers or distribution of fibers? So first, uh, short term, we we ought to convince you to uh, accept to a pull request for XIPFS, <laughs> uh, and uh, our next step would be to try to use a partitioning system to uh, isolate the kernel module one from the other in order to allow, for example, to have a driver isolated from the uh, from the thread or stuff like that. And this could be relevant for a riot, for example, to to allow uh, to prevent uh, failure from some C part of, of uh, software when you will have an, implemented a lot of rust part of the operating system. You can claim, okay, there is a remain some C part, but it's related somewhere. Oh, security is maintained. That's an example of what we do. Thanks. Um, I think we have to uh, then wrap up now for this. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>